Okay. Y'all have to understand this about me. I show you guys really such a small part of my life um, in the grand scheme of everything that goes on. I show you guys such a small part of what's going on. Um, there's a lot that I hold back and keep back from you guys. And that's just who I am in general. I have learned in life that you know, people have their own stuff going on. So you can't always selfishly dump on people your problems without being considerate of what they're going, what they might be going through. So, you know, I just, I'm not the type of person to bombard people or to constantly, you know, and I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys. It's like, I don't even want to talk about these type of things, you know? That's the thing, is that I never wanted to talk about these things. Because it's like, how do you how do you express yourself without coming across as, like, crying or complaining? Because I'm not. I'm just... I told you guys that I wasn't perfect. And I, I really do stand by that statement. I'm not perfect. I don't know um, how to do anything other... I don't know how to be anything other than me and... <clears throat> the past two days, I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I just couldn't. I, at times, caught myself not wanting to talk. Like, I couldn't talk. There's so many layers to this, right? And I'm going to try to do my best to explain to you guys how everything sort of led up to these past two days where I just couldn't like <clears throat> I think I should have seen the signs that it was coming you know but I of course I ignored it I kept on trying to push forward past my limitations and that goes to show you that honestly you really have to know your limitations and stand up for it and say okay I can't I can't take no more I, I can't take enough is enough right <clears throat> so for these past two days i have been just not here i haven't been here i was completely checked out like i mean checked out and i think that everything sort of has been leading up to it and it's crazy because i thought i thought that girl you was just sad about the camper you were like really really depressed about it you you came out of it you've made your peace with it and you were doing good you were doing good for a couple of days I was happy and I was you know continuing and then there's a lot that I don't tell you guys because I read in the comments and it's not to it's not to say that I let the comments get to me but also your comments are a good indicator of how you guys are reacting to my videos. And I kept on consistently seeing comments about like, girl, we're tired of hearing you talk. We're tired of hearing you complain. We want to see more of this. We want to see more of that. We want to see more of this. And <clears throat> when I started this journey, it was not, it was not for any of this. It was just me having video document documentation of my life my video diary and I wanted this platform to be something where I share things about myself and <clears throat> you know when you share things about yourself you open yourself up for criticism and um that just is the name of the game and it comes with it you know and you gotta I have tough skin I can handle it um but you know I saw in the comments I was like you know what Michelle let's just chill on you know, just sharing things that you want to talk about. Um, let's break it up. And that's exactly what I was doing. And um, there was a lot behind the scenes that you guys were not seeing. Like, there was so much drama around the time where I found, you know, I realistically came to terms with the camper. And then there was things going on with the solar panel. Like, there was things behind the scene. Like, honestly... And really, you know what's so sad is that I'm going to be very honest with you. This 
has all been from phone calls. You know, I do... I do my filming on my phone. I post my videos on my phone. I do everything on my phone. And it seems like I went from my phone not ringing at all to now my phone being the center of my life. And people calling me and people coming out of the woodworks and the interactions that I do have with people over the phone lately have not been too, too good. You know, it's crazy how... All of this is happening and um, I still, I don't feel different. I don't feel different, guys. If you want to keep it real, I'm still shuffling between the camper and the front of the truck. The only difference is, is that now I have a camper. I've had people, you know, call me on the phone in the middle of me going through something like this, right? Of me dealing with the fact that I bought a lemon, call me on the phone and and say, well, you know, it just seems like this and that. And, and then when I gave them an answer, I'm like, I had to sit back and I was like, I just got like really devastating news. I'm a human being trying to process that and I have to deal with phone calls and people calling me and, and messaging me and reaching out to me with such malice, I feel like, or, or maybe their intent isn't pure, you know? And as much love, let me tell you guys, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted to stay in bed today too. I'm still in my pajamas. I still got my blanket. I don't want to do anything. But I I read a letter that one of you guys have sent me in the house of realness. Honestly, I, I, that letter started the trend and I reread and I read all the letters. And I sat there and I said, okay, Michelle, there's people out there that want to see you succeed and that love you. And that all these letters, use those letters, use the positive comments, use the, all the thumbs ups instead of the thumbs down to remind you that no matter what anybody says, no matter how alone you feel, no matter how unstable everything is and everything that you got going on, you got people rooting for you and not against you. I just want to say this. For anybody thinking that this is just for stunts, let me tell you something. I welcome you to switch. I welcome you, and this is why I do these videos, to give you an insight look on how it is to be me how it is to be me. My channel is about me. I welcome any of you guys to come sit here to deal with what I have to go through and then try to figure this all out. And let me be the one behind the keyboard or behind the phone sitting comfortable judging you. Questioning you. So I just couldn't take it. I couldn't take it and... It just got to the point where I just, the weight of the world just fell on top of me and I felt like a complete failure. On the top of that phone call from there, I've been getting multiple phone calls, text messages, people reaching out to me, comments um, that I've been trying to erase and DMs and all of that, you know. This is the reoccurring comment that I keep seeing, right? There's two comments that I need to address that need, that I feel like I need to talk about and I need to express why these comments are unnecessary and harmful and do more damage than they do good. Now, let's address the topic about 
the HRT medication. Recently, I came out with a video and I, I debated, you know what, I sat here and I debated that video and I said, you know what, Michelle, you could be, you can be, ex you can use your platform to expose, um, to expose something that isn't spoken about, that isn't represented, that, you know, people are, are not making a big enough issue and that people are being affected by it because I'm being affected by it. And I shared something vulnerable about myself, about my HRT medication, my hormone replacement therapy medication, and how I haven't been able to access it and what I've had to do to access it. I did not tell you guys the full story and I'm not going to go into that in here, but what I am going to address in this video is the fact that I did not share that video to give people the allowance to use that to weaponize against me. And what I mean by that is I've been seeing constant comments consistently saying, you know, that's why you're all emotional because, you know, you're, you don't have your medication, your hormones are all out of whack and this, that and the third. Let me tell you something. Emotions hold no gender, okay? I had just found out my camper was a lemon. I really came to terms with it and I sat down with myself and I had to realize that. And that was a big devastation to me. And I'm still devastated. And I'm still here trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. And that's the truth. And anybody's entitled to have their opinion, but you want to know something? I welcome any of you guys to give up your life and sit here and try to figure it out. I welcome you. Go ahead. Go ahead. But what I will not allow is this toxic behavior of using my truth against me to weaponize me. Right? I have dealt with that all my life. I have dealt with that all my life from friends, from family members, from relationships that I have been in, situationships that I have been in, coworkers that have known, managers, bosses, all of that. I have dealt with it all my life that whenever I stand up for myself or I share my human experience and people know that I'm trans, they're like, girl, are you okay? Did you just take your hormones? Are your hormones out of whack? And it's like, oh, so me showing a human emotion, me being real, now holds no validity. It has no value because, oh, it's her hormones out of whack. That's a very toxic, that's a very toxic mindset to have. And we need to stop that because that's not okay to devalue somebody's feelings and emotions and write it off as she's just hormonal. How many times we have been desensitized as a society? We don't even realize, you know, I went back and I watched so many sitcoms where a woman, you know, let's, the classic setup of a, of a American sitcom, the wife, the wife tells the husband, can you clean the dishes? Can you clean the dishes? Can you clean the dishes? The husband doesn't do it every single day, every single day to the day where the wife has enough. And then she snaps on her husband and tells him to do the dishes. Then it's, I see it's that time of the month or you must be on your pee. You must be on your period. I have been at work, and when I've defended myself as a woman, I've been told, oh, you must be on your period because you're in a mood. And don't act like it isn't said. You know, almost like, oh, you're on your period, so that's why your hormones are all over the place. Or, or let's use another example, when you're pregnant. And you, you know, you, you're fed up with something as any human is. We all get fed up with things sometimes, and we react. We all get sad. We all have things going on right? So when you're pregnant, then it's, oh, you know, your hormones are out of whack because you're pregnant. You're crying all the time because your hormones. No, maybe you're crying because you're sad. That is a thing too. Maybe you're crying because you're disappointed. Maybe you're crying because you're hurt. 
so that is that needs to end right here that is a toxic 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 thing to say to somebody you know it's almost devaluing like oh you know that's why you're crying that's why you're all over the place because you know you're estrogen i've dealt i've been in relationships where men have told me oh you're overreacting about a situation because of your hormones so i'm overreacting about abuse because of my hormones i'm overreacting about you telling me i am not pretty enough to go out with in public or i'm not passable enough to go out in public and I should be okay with just being in the house with you. It's my hormones that's making me make it into a big deal. It's my hormones that, that that's making me sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you guys understand what I'm saying? I have had my hormones and my HRT medication used against me to explain away my feelings and my existence and my opinion as a woman. And we need to stop that culture. And that's a comment that I've been seeing. And I'm like, you know what? That is bothering and it's not okay. And I need to say something about it. Another thing that I have been seeing, right? Is this whole job situation. I love that you guys are supporting me and helping me out in this, that, and the third. And I debated. I didn't want to put... Um, a PayPal pool. I didn't want to go do a GoFundMe. I didn't want to do my Venmo. I didn't want to do my cash app because I didn't want to come across as begging. If you look at my videos, I don't consistently post it because it's like, that's not, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a big girl with or without your help. I have to figure out what I'm going to do. That's just the truth. The world don't stop. Your girl is not driving off in a porch at the end of this. Like, it's just not happening. This is my reality. So, you know, I see these comments like, girl, get a job. Girl, get a job. This, this is hiring. This is hiring. You're not trying hard enough. This is why I say I don't give you guys the full picture. And I don't tell you guys what's going on all the time. Because... If I do, it's, girl, you're complaining, you're crying, you're talking too much. You can't please everybody. And, I, and, and I'm realizing that. I'm realizing that. And I am going to embrace all the love instead of the negativity. And, um, you know, I'm going to say this here. If you, who, whoever's calling me, if you're calling me and it's to critique or have something to say negative about my life, let me tell you, you are about to get a rude awakening when you get when you, when I answer on that phone because I'm not taking it no more. I'm not taking any any I'm not taking that bad behavior anymore. Um so since y'all want the bigger picture, let's go ahead and give you the bigger picture, right? As much as y'all love to watch me and as much as I love sharing my life on here and and continuing this journey and pushing for dreams that I've you know I want to accomplish and that I've dreamt of. I have to come to the realization that I have shared my life. I have come public with my life. And with going public with your life comes people recognizing you. Now, I recently went on a job interview. Now, I, ha I stopped talking about my job interviews and everything that's going on because, you know, you get disappointed when it doesn't, you know, when you don't get a phone call and stuff like that. And, you know, you guys get so excited and then it doesn't happen. And then, you know, I feel disappointed. And you guys feel disappointed. And I don't want to disappoint you guys. So I stopped sharing that, but I've still been going on job interviews. And recently I went to a job interview for a warehouse where they package vitamins. So boom. Going there, going to go sit down so that I could do my first step, my first initial step. And um, then they, in this facility, they drug test you, you do your application all at the same time and you meet with somebody, right? So boom, doing that all in one day. So now we're in this big lobby. It's social distancing, of course. And there's these two ladies. Obviously, they know each other. There's a couple other people, but they're not important to the story. So I'm in. I have my headphones in. Phones in, right? So boom. I don't have my headphones here in the front with me. But I have my headphones in because um, they weren't playing music. But I don't know. I just sometimes when I'm in an open crowd, like it's it, or like in an open space, I get a lot of like, it's just a little too much for me. So it just eases me a little bit if I could just kind of like 
zone out the world a little bit, whatever. So I had my headphones in and I was waiting, right? Boom. Because all you were waiting for was to be called. They do the drug test first and the drug test part first and then the second part afterwards. So the receptionist is in the front. So these ladies are coming and they're talking. They're looking, right? Looking, looking, looking. So they see me, right? So now they're on their phones, right? They flipping through TikTok. They flipping through TikTok, right? So boom. So the girl look at me and I hear... I hear about, mind you, okay, so boom, I'm, mind you, the receptionist is here, I'm sitting here, and then there's chairs there, so they're sitting there, right, so they're looking at me from this angle, from the side, I got my mask on, right, so they're talking about my hair, they're like, my, my wig, they're talking about my hair, they're like, oh, look how long it is, da, 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 this, that, and third, they're talking about my hair, so they're boom, they're like, yo, I know I've seen that hair before, and this, that, and third, and she looks familiar, Blah, right? I think that's that girl on TikTok. Now, okay, so boom. I counted, like, it was probably like five chairs down, and then they were there. So they were five chairs down from me, and I could hear them, right? So now they're whispering, now they're talking, right? So now they're looking, so now she's looking through her phone. She's like, shit, I'm trying to find her, I'm trying to find her. Boom. Now they find me, and I hear my voice on their phone through the TikTok, right? I hear my voice on the phone. So now I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm like shh ish what am i gonna do right so i sit there and i like freeze up and i'm like okay cool so they're like yo i think that is i think that is i think that is that's crazy that's crazy that's crazy so boom right sorry somebody's pulling out I know I could be real loud, so I just want to make sure that they don't really hear my personal business. You see, that's another thing. I got to be careful on how I talk and when there's people around. I'm a New Yorker, so I'm very loud. Where you know, where I'm very loud. So when I get passionate, I get real loud and I talk. And honestly, there's houses all around. Like I'm in a trailer park. There's houses all around. There be people in front of their porches. There be people working on their four wheelers, their motorcycles. I'm not gonna show y'all, but like people be out here. They be out here and they be listening. Like one time my neighbor was um one time my neighbor came out and was like, I I did a, a live in the camper. And my neighbor came out the next day and was like, I couldn't really hear what you were saying, but all I heard was some yelling coming from your camper, girl. You okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was okay. And I was sharing a lot of stuff with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Nobody knows that I'm trans here. And if they did, um, there was a video that I posted where there was a certain sticker on somebody's car. That was the neighbor that heard me yelling in my camper. Okay, I already get called. They have a nickname for me, Miss. Here, they call me Miss Hollywood around here. You think if they found out, let me tell you something. I don't know, but I gotta be safe. I have to be safe. So, boom, let's go back to the story, right? So now I hear my videos in the thing, right? And they're like, if that's her, like, yo, you know that that's. A man she said that she was trans that are not she don't look it right that's crazy right she don't look it she don't look it she don't look it they were like yo i'm gonna try to get closer to see so now they move their seats to the first two seats on that first row so now i'm sitting there and i'm like just at that time my name gets called i go to the back i spit in the tube we sit down, file out my paperwork, and they're like, okay, da da da. If everything comes back, um, we'll go for the second for the second part, the standard third, right? So boom. As I'm coming out through the exit, the receptionist is there, the ladies are up in front, they showing them on the phone my TikTok. My TikTok, and I see it because I'm coming out, right? So then she puts the receptionist puts her phone down puts the phone down and they they pretend like they start talking about something and mind you i'm like yo people are not discreet here 
Let me tell you something about the South. They do not know what whispering is. I swear they don't know what whispering is. Like, whatever. So they put the phone down, this, that, and the third, right? So then the receptionist is like, have a good day, you know, this, that, and the third. I was like, thank you. Um, I was like, thank you. Hopefully you'll be seeing me soon, this, that, and the third, you know? Being optimistic and, and I really wanted to like not show them that they affected me. Then I went home, right? I have to realize that I just shared my life. And that might be the reality. And that might continue to happen. And as much love and support that I get, there are going to be those situations. I just had to, the last job I had, I had to deal with people going into the bathroom, jumping over the stall to see what was in between my legs because they thought I was trans. What would happen if they knew. I was working in a job where the cook blatantly said when my coworker showed him a picture of a trans woman in a porno naked and said, showed her the front half and said, look, you know, she's pretty, right? Cook's like, yeah. Showed him the bottom half. And then he's like, yo. She's like, what would you do if that happened in real life? He said, that's why I have a gun. That is the reality. That happened to me here. And now I've put myself out there. And I just went to a job interview. And they knew it was me. And were talking about me. And called me a man. But. I didn't want to share that. I didn't want to always share the bad news with you guys or something that's happening. You know that I've lost friends in my life. I've lost relationships with friends in my life that, you know, I would call them and they'll be like, girl, what's going on now? You always got something going on. Like, you know, this, that, and the third. At some point, you got to come to the realization that you trans and you asked for it. So this is what you're going to have to deal with. What are you going to do about it now? So it's like, you know, I, I've had people where they get tired of it. And I see those comments where people are like, girl, stop crying. People at saying that I'm begging. And it's like, on top of all this, leading up to all this, right? I'm getting phone calls and text messages and messages on my social media from my family members that I haven't heard anything about. They don't check on me. They don't look for me. But, to, but checking out because they're like, I saw your video. That's what you're doing now? Wow. You know, like to say negative things. You know? I didn't know if I wanted to share this. And I'm not going to cry about it because you want to know something. I know that that person is probably watching. And I'm going to be real with you. What you said to me really broke me. It really did break me. And it's unfortunate that, you know, you decide to see my pain here and how... I'm showing my truth and you use that phone call and you use that message and that time that you took to text. And that's what I want to say about all the people that have negative comments. You took that time to write that when you could have used that time more productively for something else instead of spewing hate. But this person took the time out to reach out to me and said to me, this is what you're doing. Um, okay. I'm going to tell you the truth. So the day before these past two days, right? So the day before the past two days, the day that I shot that video that I was bored in the camper. Well, that day I got a phone call from a family member. And that family member basically said that I'm an embarrassment to the family. And that... People don't really care about me. They just pity me. And once they get tired of me, they're going to forget about me. And I would have, and I've done, and that I would have done this all for nothing because whatever chance at a normal life that I thought I had, I took away because I've openly come out as trans. And they said that you can't take that away once it's on the internet. And they were like, you think that you're going to get hired now? Like on a real job? 
they were like, you think that people don't see these things? You probably thought that none of us was going to find this. Well, we found it. And we want you to all know that, you know, you're a joke. Basically, this family member said that we, you know, as a trans woman, we are abominations and we are, you know, just spawns of like demons and satans and fallen angels and we're meant our purpose here in life is to you know show people how not to be and what not to do and to be living testaments of what happens when you do you know when you do do that and how hard it's going to be they're like why do you think it's hard for you women why do you think it's hard the bit you know my family member basically said why do you think it's hard for you women why you do why you don't see a lot of you women out there married in hollywood and successful and doing things why don't you think you see it so they said you did all this for nothing and now you took away whatever hope you had at a normal life and a normal job and you know you're gonna be forgotten like yesterday's news and how many of you girls have been killed already how many of them do we still talk about they said you went ahead and exposed your truth all for nothing it doesn't mean anything and now you've put a target on your back. That person said, you over there opening boxes and you don't even have a home. And you know, if I really, really wanted to, I could really find you. If somebody really, really wanted you, they have a general location of where you're at. They really, really wanted to you to find you. They could find you, and you'll be gone. They were like, "How long?" They said, "Who knows how long it would be until they realistically find you? If they find you." They were like, "They basically, basically said that like my family don't check on me." They were like, "Nobody check on you." So nobody is looking for you. So because nobody's looking for you, who knows when it would be where somebody will find out when you're missing. That shit hurts. When a family member basically tells you like, ain't nobody looking for you in your family. So if you go missing, they might not ever find you or they might not ever find out you went missing because nobody looking for you. And that kind of hit home. The only time they've looked for me is to tell me how I'm making a fool of myself and how I'm embarrassing myself and how I'm basically like putting a target on my back. That's the only time. And they said, good luck. So then that made me think, realistically, if I did go missing, if somebody did really, like, wanted to find me and hurt me, and I did go missing, realistically, my family's not looking for me. Ain't nobody calling me, saying, hey, girl, come down here. So, since they are, like, my legal family, it made me think like, okay, they not looking for me. If I go missing, what's realistically gonna happen, right? And then if they do find me, what's gonna happen afterwards? So as a trans woman, I have to worry about how my family is going to dispose of my body. And I had to come to terms with the realist, with the fact that I realistically have put myself out there. I'm not getting paid on YouTube. I'm not getting paid on TikTok. Like, I'm not making money off of this. I don't have, you know, like what I'm saying? Like, 
ain't nothing pop off yet. Like, Rihanna ain't called me yet. You know what I'm saying? So, like, realistically, like, so I knew I had to sit down and write a will just in case. To ensure that if something happened to me, I would get buried as me. And not who they want me to be. Or maybe they wouldn't even come and claim me. And I'll just be an unmarked grave. So when you have to write your own will. To make sure that if something happens to you. Your body is going to be respected I don't think my family would even do a wake I'm the mistake of the family that they're trying to forget I'm the abomination I'm the taboo I'm the embarrassment in the room and I know you guys are watching to gossip more about me to talk about me to do whatever y'all want. To say whatever mean things y'all want about me. But here's what I have to say. It's sad. It's sad. That that's what y'all gonna do. I don't know why y'all hate me so much. So. In combination of the phone calls. The DMs. The comments. Everything going on. On top of everything that's going on in my personal life. On top of what I went through on that job interview. On top of the fact that I, I, I'm, I don't know realistically. I don't know realistically about my medication. How I'm going to pay for that. Still don't got a job. Also, car insurance. No longer have it. That's another thing. But I didn't want to talk about it. Because then I don't want. You know what I'm saying? Like. So now I have no car insurance because it relapsed because I just didn't have it. That's what I'm going through. Having to worry about writing my will. Having to be quiet and be careful what I say around here so that nobody knows that I'm trans. Being afraid that if they find out. That's going to spark a conversation. You got to understand, we on a, we in a trailer. There is people on top of people. There is families living, okay? There is multiple families living in one home, okay? There is a lot of people around here. I have to be careful. I have to be careful. I'm not trying to become the freak show that everybody's like, yo, that's where she lived. That's where she lived. That's where she lived. Go look at her. Go look at her. Go look at her. Like those two girls at the freaking, at the job interview, moving closer to me so they could get a better look at me. Then, of course, I didn't even talk about the fact that they had their phone out like that, taking pictures of me, taking pictures of me at a job interview. Now I got to worry if these pictures come out, what that's going to look like. That's also giving away my location and where I could possibly be working. Putting myself even more at danger. People don't think. You take a picture and you do stuff like that. You don't think that you could be hurting somebody. You could be giving the killer the location that they need. The pieces of the puzzle that they need to get to you. We need to do better. We need to be better. And we need to stop that. Like, honestly. I'm a freaking human being. I'm not just like, just think before you type. Think before you call. I just probably had one of the hardest two days of my life. I didn't even want to get up. I couldn't even find the will. But it was because of the letters that you guys have write, wrote me. It's because of all the love and support that I got up today. And I said, you know what, Michelle? You owe them an explanation. And you got to give it to them. And you owe it to them to be real. So, I'm sorry, guys. And I love you for watching. And I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Look. Look. One day, I'm going to be my own business owner. 
and I'm going to create an environment where I'm not going to have a receptionist entertaining nonsense with potential workers. How unprofessional is that? You're a receptionist, and these are two ladies waiting to be interviewed, and you're looking at a phone talking about somebody. Just saying. I love you guys for watching, and I'm going to pull myself together. I'm going to do a couple of TikTok videos today, and we're going to move forward, and we're not going to allow all these haters and all the naysayers and all the people that are telling me that I am making a joke of myself and that I'm begging and that I am crying too much and I'm too this and I'm too that. You know what I say to you today? I am just enough. And you are too. So the fact that I was able to spark enough interest that you took the time out to give me a thumbs down or a negative comment or a negative phone call, I've impacted you in some way. And I, and I plan on continuing to impact you. So stay tuned. I love you guys.